All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Yes, I hope you all are. You all are doing well. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yes, right. So let's just say that you know I request you all to mute yourselves so that you know you can follow the class. All right. So I'm going to mute you all at the same time. Please maintain that unless and until you have a doubt. Please don't unmute yourself. Let me share my screen with you in some time. So today we are going to look at the third or uh, like, you know, what do you call it, silent signal iterator, which comes uh, like, you know, in, in our, uh, what do you call it, um, uh, invertebrate phyla, in fact. So we'll just like, you know, have a look at it, basically the general characteristics. Then uh, after that, you know, the classifications of uh, um, phylum nidaria or as it is known as silent iterator. Then, uh, you know, a type study we have got that is uh, Aurelia. And then what exactly is polymorphism in that area? So I'll be following your textbook for sure. But, you know, you can just have a look at uh, the uh, PowerPoint presentation that is going to be uh, given to you. So, you know, just like let me share my screen with you. Right. Right. So when it comes to phylum nidaria, you get to see that they're actually known as the jellyfishes or sea anemones. It's not sea anemone, it is actually sea anemone. Anemones and corals for that matter. So are you, what happened? One minute, let me share my screen again. Okay. So share screen. Sure. Right. Perfect. I hope the screen is visible to you all. So very colorful phylum for that matter, invertebrate phylum. You know that them as jellyfishes. So you get to see that, you know, Aurelia is a type of jellyfish. You're going to have a case study regarding that. Then you're going to see it's a representative of one of the classes of uh, uh, phylum nidaria or cylindrata. So when it comes to phylum nidaria or cylindrata, you get to see that nidos means it is a stinging nettle. It's a Greek word for that matter. So you get to see that there are nearly around 9,000 species of, uh, of this phylum that are present. They include the corals, very popularly known corals. And then you have the hydrozoans or the hydra. You have the jellyfishes. You have something called as the Portuguese man of war, which is again a type of jellyfish, very dangerous. And, you know, it can also cause, uh, it is venomous in nature. Sea anemones, sea pens, sea whips, sea fans, all of these are nidarians or they belong to phylum cylindrata. Let us see why the name cylindrata came in the first place. So some of them are like, you know, most of them are aquatic in nature. Some of them live in fresh water, but they are abundant in tropical waters, meaning waters are, which are like, you know, slightly warmer in nature. They have a radially symmetrical body with calcareous skeletons. And these form this framework of reefs and atolls in tropical seas. You'll get to know the definition of atoll by the end of the class, that is. So then again, this most characteristic feature in this phylum is the presence of a body cavity, which is a silo. This functions as the digestive system. Uh, so that's what. So that is why its name is Celenterata. That is, they have two body features. That is, one is a sedentary polyp type, and then the, the free swimming medusa form which is uh, like, you know, uh, and there is an alternation between the free swimming uh, medusa form and the stationary or sedentary polyp form. Again, so this life cycle, life cycle alternates between these two forms. 
This phenomenon is actually known as alternations of generations or metagenesis. You have seen this particular aspect even in some porphyrins also. Now, another feature is the presence of specialized structures, which are known as nidae or nidoblasts, stinging nettle. That's what. Fourth feature is, you know, there is a division of labor. That is, there is uh, the, uh, e, uh, the same part does not perform all functions. There is a diversity in the functions, basically. Prevel, uh, like, you know, as you see, nidaria and tenophora were included in the phylum Coelenterata. Uh, but because of the absence of nematocysts and metagenesis, that is alternations of generations. So tenophora has been separated from nidaria. So nematocysts, you know, having that, they have been placed in the separate phylum altogether, excuse me. Right. So when it comes to the uh, general characteristics, the multicellular in nature, marine freshwater forms, uh, then uh, they're either found uh, they're solid or they can be colonial. Yes. Sorry. Madam, I could not to Chavi Chapak and Madam explain Jane, Madam Kuncham. Solitary creatures, marine forms, then you know, the solitary and they occur low, like you know. Uh, Living as single, right? Colonial means existing in a colony wise. I can tell you only you know, I cannot explain as to what it is, right? All right, right. I request you all to mute yourselves and I'll try to explain now. Body wall has two different layers. One is the outer ectoderm and the second is the inner endoderm. Therefore, we can categorize that they belong to the, uh, uh, you know, that uh, uh, like, you know, the type diploblastic. Now the endoderm, whatever is there inside, it forms a cavity, which is known as the gastrovascular cavity, also known as the gastroderm. So, nidarians are very diverse in nature. So, they can be colonial as it is given siphonophore. Siphon means like a straw, massive medusae. The medusa is a free living form, corals, feathery hydroids, box jellyfishes, very, very uh, poisonous in nature. And they have complex eyes also. I'll just go to the next one. So, again, like I told you, radial symmetry modified as biradial symmetry. And again, diploblastic, that is uh, divided into outer ectoderm, inner endoderm. And then this is known as the tissue level organization because your body is getting divided into two different kinds. And, you know, you have other different tissues performing different functions. There is also gelatinous mesoglia and the gastrodermal uh, tissue layers, basically. And the endoderm, uh, you know, lines the gastrovascular cavity. There is a nerve net which have with the nervous system and you have nidocysts which are used for defense feeding attachment defense whenever there is some other creature coming feeding for the sake of food it hunts with the uh, help of the nidocysts by stinging on the prey so that the prey gets either paralyzed or killed and then for attachment as well so this box jellyfishes have um, nidocysts and the tentacles you'll get to learn about them which are actually so long, they're actually almost around 8 to 10 feet long. And they're very dangerous. Even one of them, one sting from each tentacle also is enough to kill a man. That's what it's like. You know, if you, if you get to see or read a little bit more about them. Uh, let me go to the next. So this is how the diploblastic body plan is all about. Ectoderm, inner mesoglia, endoderm. This is the gastrovascular cavity or the gut. So this is how the body wall of a hydra or a nidarian looks. We'll come to this in some time. But first, I want to just like, you know, finish with the general characteristics so that, you know, you can understand the general layout of all the organisms that are there in this particular class. So 
when it comes to the gastrovascular cavity or the cylindron, it is not exactly similar to the celo. Uh, so these animals are actually acelomate in nature. That is, this gastric cavity, whatever is present over here, it only helps in gaseous exchange, that is respiration. It helps in digestion and excretion. But there is no particular, we have for, uh, what do you call it, exchange our respiratory lungs. We have uh, the stomach and the elementary canal and, uh, and, and the small and the large intestines for a digestion. And for excretion, we have kidneys. So all this, uh, like, you know, that is the blood filtration and the excretion, we have the kidneys. But that is not exactly seen in the nadarians. The basic, you know, tissue level organization starts with them. And these are carnivores, that is, they feed on minute organisms, marine, for example, the zooplankton and uh, the smaller uh, fishes for that matter. Most of the nadarians, the mouth is surrounded by long tentacles and it's always that there are more than one in number, always. And these tentacles have the nematosis, that is the stinging cells, like I was telling you, which help in capturing food, defense. And most of these animals are passive feeders, that is they feed on food particles that actually come in contact with the tentacles. They do not go hunting. Whatever food comes in their way, that is when the tentacles start taking it in and, you know, that is used for feeding. And uh, organic materials tentacles. are also absorbed. Yes? Tentacles. Tentacles are long, long uh, uh, parts. You know, I'll just like kind of show you if you can see this picture. You see this? Is Can you see my arrow? Yes. The cursor? Yes. See, these ones are known as the tentacles. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. All right. Fine. This is one of the types of uh, jellyfish is basically Aurelia, the box jellyfish. So you have different kinds. Again, they're beautiful creatures, but one of the most dangerous creatures that you can actually come across when you go into water for that matter. So, right. We'll come to this later in some time. So mouth again is same used for disposing of undigested food materials. Ten, and ten there point, is... Ten sorry? Ten point. I'm, I'm not going to go point wise here. So, see, organic materials are like, you know, taken through or absorbed through the body surface. And then you have a symbiotic association with algae as well, which live inside the bodies of the nadarians. So, if, because there, there is a beneficial uh, relationship over there, it is known as a symbiotic a a a association. Algae live in the uh, nadarians. And then at the same time, they uh, the nadarians also provide necessary food materials. So, it's a symbiotic relationship. Then mouth, again, is used for undigested food materials to be released off into the water. Digestion can be both intracellular as well as extracellular. And then you have this nematocysts, which have a whip-like thread that come out, uh, secreted by the Golgi complex of uh, nidoblasts. And then nematocyst is not an organelle, but it is a secretory product apparently. So it does not, it is not coming out of, it is not an organelle as such which is coming out from the cell, but it is a sec the cell secretes the nematocyst out. And again, there are of three types, which is like one is like long whip-like thread. Sec the second is um, this thread may be provided with a spine that may be with poisonous secretions. For example, as in, as in the case of the Portuguese man of war, and uh, they live even after the death of the animal and discharge enough poison to kill an adult human being. So even if the organism that is, for example, the Portuguese man of war that we are talking about, it is an, uh, like, you know, uh, a kind of uh, 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 nidarian which lives in the seas. And uh, even if that organism is dead, the poison in it is still enough to kill a man when, uh, when you know, a person comes in contact with it. And then the second is some anthozoans. They have nematoses that are adhesive. That is, they stick. They are sticky in nature. They are known as the spirocysts. And some of them have nematoses that entangle bits of mud. That means, you know, they can take mud in. They form a tubule in which an animal can live or become a bur or like, you know, can burrow and live in such kind of a tube. These are known as 
tycosis the p is the p is silent so it is tycosists nervous system is a primitive one just a diffuse net of uh, network of cells sensory organs uh, like you know organs can be simple or they can be complicated as well so they have eye spots or statocysts and you have the two morphological forms one is the sessile polyp that is sessile means sedentary it cannot move anywhere and the sexual free living of the free swimming medusa form and all these creatures can exist in one of these two forms they cannot exist in the same form at the same time all right and then asexual reproduction is by budding and sexual reproduction is by the formation of ova or the sperms some nidarians the polyps are modified to have specific functions for example defense or for food capture for reproduction etc and some animals are hermaphrodite that is both male and female organisms are all like you know uh, are present yeah uh, like you know uh, organs are present in the same animal but others the sexes are separate the male organisms are different the female organisms are different there is again as i told you alternation of generation or metagenesis sexual free swimming medusoid forms has this al uh, alternates with the asexual or the sessile polyp forms and there is a larval form which is known as planula so you have nidocytes again characteristic this is the most important characteristic of this particular phylum altogether nida is a fluid filled intracellular capsule which encloses a coiled hollow tube so uh, as you can see this is the hypostome and this is the body wall of the nidarian you can see nematocyst epithelial wall this is the endodermal wall this is the gelatinous mesoglia that is present these are the gland cells these are the endodermal epithelial cells again you have se basic sensory stuff like you know basic sensory neurons etc again the nervous system is diffuse and it is not very highly uh, uh, developed so when it comes to the classes in the area you can get to see that there are three classes hydrozoa scyphozoa and anthozoa excuse uh -huh. me Kausa. what is this i'll tell you later what is you that you can see that later chalo go is that kind of a squid it's not a squid it is a hydra it's a jellyfish go now and what are these right here later go sorry about that so let's come to the uh, so these are the general characteristics as you can see epidermis gastrodermis is differentiated i have already explained these points to you you can just have a look at it in the powerpoint so this is a nidocyte structure we'll come to this later so when it comes to the classification you can get to see that these uh, uh, there is a lot of detailed explanation of nematocysts in this particular uh, powerpoint that i'm sharing with you uh, like you know sharing with you and how the nervous system is there if you uh, i will share it with you but unfortunately it is not exactly like you know uh, uh, so much of explanation is not given in your textbook so following or keeping in view your textbook what i'll do is i'll just go to the uh, direct classification of it so you can read it when you are like you know having some free time and you know you're going to get to know about all of this uh in some time so right so when it comes to the classification you get to see that uh classes hydrozoa scyphozoa and anthozoa or, or actinozoa are the three classes in phylum nidaria so class hydrozoa are the mostly colonial or uh, uh what do you call it uh, marine nidarians and some of them like live solitarily and some of them are uh, uh, colonial in nature and uh, some of them are freshwater organisms some of them are sedentary that's what the same you know like the same thing um, sessile others are free living in nature and then if you get to see again depending upon how they are either sedentary or uh, uh, um, uh, free swimming they will keep moving around and then you have a remarkable degree of polymorphism that is you know you have uh, various kinds of zooids i'll tell you what zooids are in some time uh, which have a lot of different functions altogether so you see the entire colony looks like a plant with many branches and these branches represent each branch represents a different uh, organism as such uh 
Okay, what I'll do is I'll just go through this nervous system as I have already told you basic sensory neurons, nerve net, odors, single ca cables. You have a bit of ganglia that is present. Then the cilia nervous system and the senses, when you see, they detect the physical contact for that matter. There are some gap junctions also that have already been formed. Nidarians have neurons around the nerve, system, uh, nerve nets. So these neurons help in the sensory part of it. These are the C stars, hydrides, and so this is how it. This, these are the tentacles that are present. This is a C anemone basically. So feeding is again given over here. This is the epidermis uh, and the endodermis. This is the gastrodermis or the gastrovascular cavity. Respiration. Uh, we'll just come to that in some time. I've already told you about the respiration also. Exchange of gases, that is the most basic thing that can take place. Again, alternations of generation, a polyp with medusa form. Medusa is the uh, sexual uh, free-living dioecious form, basically. And then you have the generalized Nidarian life cycle, sedentary polyp to uh, uh, free-swimming medusa, alternation of generation, basically. Now, when it comes to the classes, these are the class hydrozoa, as you can see, beautiful, beautiful hydrozoans, basically. Majority are mirai, but some of them are freshwater also. Again, life cycle has a display of alternations of generations. Uh, some medusa stage is lost, others polyp stage is very small. So what are the distinguishing features of hydrozoans from the other classes of uh, Nidaria? You can get to see that. Entire colony looks like a plant with branches, as you can see. And each branch represents an individual animal as such. And there are two types of zooids. And these individual animals are actually known as zooids. So these animals, zooids, are of two different kinds. One is gastrozooids, the other is blastozooids or gonozooids. Go gastrozooids, that is for feeding, basically gastro, as you can understand by the name, feeding, digestion, etc so you they have uh, they are vegetative in function they have a mouth tentacles for feeding and they help for feeding and for the colony maintenance basically the whole is not living organism so when this particular individual feeds it feeds for the other the whole organism as such the blastozooids are again modified to zooids they are useful for ma yes ma'am what are zooids can you please explain i was so, okay so this whole entire colony, this is one jellyfish or colony as you can see. Now in this, there are two different kinds of individual that as you can see, you can see my cursor, right? Yes, ma'am. So there are two different kinds of individuals. Each individual is known as a zooid. Okay. okay Each individual is known as a zooid. Some, the, some are there which are tentacles, which are longer in nature. Some of them are like, you know, uh, known as, you know, these free floating ones attached to this particular part is known as a zooid. And zooids are of two types, gastrozooids and blastozooids. So this individual animals, they're actually individual animals living as such. They're known as zooids. And one when one zooid feeds, it helps in the maintenance of the whole uh, colony as such. All right? Mm -hmm. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, blastozooids are modified uh, zooids for asexual reproduction. Then they produce medusae, which, uh, which produce the gametes. Now, body is radially symmetrical. You can follow the diagram that is there in the textbook also. Uh, I'll, come, I'll be coming to that. So you can see that body is again diploblastic, having both ectoderm, endoderm with a non-cellular uh, mesoglia. And then you can get to see that, you know, there is uh, 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 the epidermis, which consists, you know, which has the muscle cells and uh, it has uh, interstitial cells, sensory cells, gland cells, nerve cells. And the epidermis again secretes a cuticle, which is known as perisarc. And uh, this perisarc, for example, in some hydrozoids, it becomes like a stone-like structure, becomes hard, and that is uh, known as the coral. And offense, defense, uh, uh, characteristic or organ for this particular uh, class is the stinging organs or the nematocysts. 
and sensory organs are not exactly present or sensor uh, sense organs are not there and the nematocysts only act as the sense organs as such so specialized sense organs are not there so nematocysts help in the presence uh, like you know help in detecting food or the presence uh, like you know or the uh, predators as such and then they help in the offense and defense offense means if it is food and it is a prey living some other uh, organism it helps in you know stinging it and for defense if it is another some kind of a target as such when the organism feels it is in danger it is going to sting again this is in defense again the gastrovascular system is simple you do not have a mouth or a stomatidium again uh, you know it is only through the uh, exterior by a single aperture or the mouth basically there is no stomatidium as such again when it comes to the different kinds of uh, pictures i'll just like kind of show you if you can obelia is one animal do i have a picture of it see this is the structure and life cycle of the obelia as you can see thank you love you so obelia has tentacles it, this is the kind of uh, picture that is there basically you can see there are tentacles there are, there are hypostomes and there is uh, hydrotheca these are different kinds of forms of uh, like you know the body parts of the obelia hydra obelia velella porpita all these are physalia millipora all these are the classes of hydrozoans basically um right so again they have uh, uh, alternations of generations as you can see so what happens is sexual form alternates with after one generation of the sexual form it alternates with the asexual form so these are the two distinct stages in the life history and asexual forms are known as the hydroid forms whereas the sexual forms are known as the medusoid forms excuse me i am not interested <laughs> I request you all to mute yourselves. Right. So the asexual forms are again uh, represented by uh, the what do you call it. Um, Uh, gastrozoites that is the vegetative ones and uh, they are sedentary that is sessile fixed to a substratum or a, 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 a place as such they are again diploid and no gonads because the gonads are present for the gonozoites we've already read that the zoids are of two types the gastrozoites and the blastozoites the so the blasto or the gonozoites have the uh, uh, what do you call it uh, the sexual organs as such now the buds uh, like the hydroids or the asexual form reproduce by budding that is by asexual reproduction this budding may or may not separate from the parental form so that is why the entire colony may look like a plant with many branches as such you see this picture the first picture as you can see it is there in your book also figure 4.1 if you get to see so by budding what happens is asexual reproduction by budding it is not this is the bud that is coming out what is happening is the buds may or may not separate if they separate they'll form a different colony altogether if they do not separate what happens is this one thing is one individual which is still living with the parental form attached to the parental form because of which this whole thing is a colony as such so now medusoid forms of free swimming forms and they have gonads see these are the gonads these are the this is the medusoid bud this will uh, detach itself from the parental colony and this will have gonads so this bisexual reproduction that is what happens is it is like an open umbrella form and both the sexes are separate the male uh, medusa is different from the uh, female medusa that is so again fertilization is external over here so what happens is because of which uh, 
uh, um, what do you call it? Uh, I'm sorry, the fertilization may be internal in the medusa or it can be external in the seawater also. That's why I said external uh, uh, fertilization as such. So gametes are produced, sexual reproduction is taking place after the fusion of male and female gametes. Fertilized egg develops into a planula larva, which is again uh, uh, like, you know, uh, changing into a hydrula larva. And then this metamorphosis into a hydroid form, which is again asexual in nature. And then the medusite forms are never produced from the fertilized eggs. So if you see, the medusa is always produced from the hydroid form only. That is the reason it is known as alternations of generation. So examples again, as you have seen, they are the obelia and uh, physalia and millipora, porpita. So if I'm not wrong, physalia is a, por a Portuguese uh, uh, man of war, basically. That is a common name. So when it comes to class cyphozoa, Again, as I told you, uh, like, you know, there is this alternation of generations. This is a hydrozoan medrosa. You have the oral and the aboral ends, basically. Adhesive pads, these are the, uh, this is known as the velum. These are the tentacles that are present. And this is the stomach, manubrium, gonads that are present. Oral arm, you have an aboral arm also. Hopefully, we'll get to that now because this is the Skyphozoan uh, part that we are going to see. So, in the class Skyphozoa, commonly known as jellyfishes, all of them are medusoid forms. That is, they are free swimming in nature. Medusoid forms are the dominant forms. They are exclusively marine in nature. Most of them, are, that is, the majority of them are pelagic. That is, they float. They swim freely on the ocean surface. Sometimes they can even come onto the seashore also. And some of the skyphozoans are found attached to coral reefs or mud banks. And these animals have an open umbrella uh, shape upper convex, as you can see, which is known as the X umbrella and the lower concave or the sub umbrella. And there's a tubular manubrium that is present. And you have, uh, which projects downwards, basically. Mouth is situated on the manubrium. So somewhere down over here, you can see the mouth. And uh, it is it can be or cannot be surrounded by tentacles. Mesoglia is usually cellular. Now, gastrovascular cavity can be divided into septal pouches. Uh, uh, or that is uh, four interradial pouches. Basically, this is the radial canal, as you can see, and interradial pouches for that matter. There is no true velum as such. But they have, uh, the velum has a sensory nature, uh, that is what they mean. And then you have a tentaculosis or uh, this is the tentacular bulb which with tentacular cysts and uh, which are also known as rophalia. Now gametes are produced by the medusa. We know that the medusal form is a sexual form basically having the gametes. They are dioecious. Sperms are released into the gastrovascular cavity. And then they are carried out into, uh, to, into the water. The male gametes enter into another animal along with the water currents. Now, ova, whenever they are present inside the gastrovascular cavity, whenever they ripe, they, when they you know, meet the sperms that are coming in, fertilization takes place. This can be either external or internal. In case it is internal, it occurs in the gastrovascular cavity of the female. Now, when the zygote is released from the gastrovascular cavity, then as such, what happens is uh, it lodges itself into the grooves of the uh, oral arms. As you can see, this is the oral end. These are the oral arms, as you can see. And uh, when they give it in the color, uh, like, you know, in this as such, you know, you can see the distinction. Otherwise, this is how it is. These are the tubularia. I'll come to this again. I think, do you have it in your, in your uh, book? the tubularia example along with the uh, pictures i don't think so all right let me start and let me continue again so what happens is the zygote which is there in the gastrovascular cavity lodges itself in the grooves of the oral arms these are the oral arms basically and then they develop into the planula larva again then planula larva again develops into a polyp stage, which is known as the Skyphistoma. Again, it is a very reduced stage, 
as such the amount of time that is it is spending as a skyphy stoma is very small this produces this skyphy stoma stage produces the medusae directly or with the help of bud, budding again or transverse fission which is known as strobilation so the medusae that are produced by the skyphy stoma are called as ephyrae singular form is ephyra plural is ephyrae and this develops into the adult animals example is aurelia that is the jellyfish now you have the class anthozoans So this is the jellyfishes, as you can see. You have the oral end, the aboral end. All of them are umbrella in nature. Different kinds of tentacles are present, and uh, they are the true jellyfishes. Aurelia is the most common one. We will come to it later. We have that in our type study, basically. So before that, I will just go with uh, our uh, the third one, that is the class. Uh, we do not have cubozoa as such. We have class anthozoa. So I will tell you about the class Anthozoa. So these class Anthozoan uh, nidarians are all fixed to the substratum. That is, they are sessile. They cannot move anywhere. They are either solitary in nature or they are colonial. And they exist only in the polyp form. Medusa stage is not known. The Medusa stage is the free living form, which is not known to this class at all. Body is cylindrical in shape. And again, uh, mouth leads to the pharynx and this leads to the gastrovascular cavity. There are some mesentries. Again, mes uh, mesoglia is well developed and it has amoeboid meso uh, mesenchyme cells. And then they have perfect radial symmetry when you look at them uh, from outside. But they have biradial symmetry, some of them at least, you know, uh, because of the... Uh, or torsion that they basically face through. We'll just like kind of come to that. So body is cylindrical in shape with biradial symmetry. That is why they're known as biradial, in fact, not uh, radial. Body wall is triploblastic in nature. Mesoglia is well developed. There is a fibrous connective tissue. And this separates both the endoderm and the ectoderm. Apical end or the oral end is enlarged. It forms an oral disc. This is surrounded by the tentacles. So these are the oral tentacles and this is the mouth or the oral end basically. And then you have the gastrovascular cavity over here. This differs from the hydrozoans with the fact that there is a stomatidium which is present and radiating mesentries or vertical radiating partitions. Muscular system is developed and has epitheliomuscular cells, which have both the uh, ectodermal as well as endodermal cells within themselves. And then when you get to see, budding is going to take place, or uh, which is, uh, and also there is a transverse fission. So a cut appears like this in this nature. So this is known as a strobilation. This, uh, this is similar to that of the class Kyphozoans. And most members of this class, there is extensively only asexual reproduction taking place. And uh, these give rise to different kinds of colonies. And the genders are or the sexes are separate. And then you can get to see that gonades are developed. These are the mesenteries, as you can see. So this mesenteries have mesenterial filament. These are the mesenteries. And gonades develop in these mesenteries. And the sex cells are lodged in the endoderm. As you can see, this is the endoderm. Mesentery is this particular pro out, uh, whichever is coming or, you know, going into the gastrovascular cavity as such. So in the, at the endoderm part, you have the gonades that are present. And then once that is uh, like, you know, once they have uh, matured, what happens is this, the cells get uh, discharged into the cylinderon. Fertilized egg, again, after fertilization, since the sexes are separate, once the fertilization takes place, what happens is there is this development of free swimming planula form. Then it again undergoes metamorphosis where it becomes sedentary adult. So example of this is the penatula, which is the sea pen. And then you have uh, corallium, which is the red coral. And then allisonium, which is the dead man's finger, different kinds of uh, anthozoans as such. 
So this is the choral anatomy, basically. You can see this is the mouth, the tentacles, the nematocysts or the singing cells, outer epidermis, inner mesoglia. This is the stomach, gastrodermis. This is the sinosarc. This is the basal plate. It is attached completely. So this is how the life cycle of a sea anemone looks. From the adult stage, fertilized egg, planular larva, polyp form, which is small, and then you have the young sea anemone polyp, which becomes or matures into the uh, sedentary adult polyp, uh, sedentary adult uh, sea anemone as such. So life cycle of corals. So these are the coral species as such, as you can see. Now, I'll have to come back to Aurelia, that is our jellyfishes, which belong to class Kyphozoa. So Aurelia, phylum, as you know, it is already a uh, class uh, Nidaria. And uh, phy phylum Nidaria, class Cyphozoa, order uh, Cematostome, uh, suborder is Ulmaridae, genus is Aurelia, species is Aureta again known as jellyfishes or moon jelly found in warm temperate seas all over the world it has a gelatinous mesoglean layer it look uh, that is why it is known as a jellyfish as such and it is found floating near the surface of the sea singly or in groups now the structure, as you can see, this is the medusoid stage uh, as such, the side view and the radial view. You have this picture in your textbook. So this is the medusoid stage, as you can see. It's about seven and a half to 30 centimeters in diameter, so quite big. Umbrella is shallow, flattened, bell-like structure. X umbrella stage is uh, quite convex. I'm trying to get that picture if possible. This is Faisalia, the Portuguese man of war. Uh, yes. So you have the umbrella or the X umbrella uh, picture basically. And the body parts, you can see that there are particular radii of the umbrella for that matter. And the circular margin, whatever is there, it can be broken into different, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, delicate processes. And each, not, you have four per radial and four inter radial. Now, each notch is occupied by one sense organ. So these are the notches. So you can see, and then for radial, for interradial, and you have a notch with a, a what do you call it, a sense organ, which is known as a tentaculocyst or a rophalium that lies in between. Um, two small delicate processes, which are known as marginal lapids. Now, what happens is this is there and you have a valerium or a pseudobelum that is present and a circular or a ring canal. This is the ring canal as you can see that is present over here. This is the rophalium. These are the rophalia present and this is the uh, enlarged part of the rophalia lapet that is present over here. You have the tentacles coming out. You have a bell margin. This is the sensory lapet, a protective hood, ocellus or an eye a statocyst, a uh, rophalia lapid, tentacles. So a very short manubrium that is present. Each corner of the mouth is drawn into a long and a tapering, uh, much frill delicate process, which is known as the oral arm. Oral arm with oral tentacles as such. See, this is the cross section. So you can't exactly see in it. You can just like, you know, have a look at it in your textbook, basically. Uh, you have even nematocysts that are present and again nematocysts which are pre uh, like you know that are present on both the surfaces of the umbrella as such and on the uh, gastric filament as such. Now there is a rectangular mouth that is present which leads to a short gullet present in the manubrium. Gullet opens into four large lobed stomach which is produced with gastric pouches and uh, you can see the gastric pouches here and the gastric filaments. 
Now a C-shaped gonad which is, is present okay. with a small row of small tentacles or the gastric filaments. They are present at the floor of the gastric pouch. Uh, you might be able to see a little bit of it when you see figure 4.5 in your textbook as uh, like, you know, so that, you know, you'll get a better picture because I only have a cross section with me right now. So these uh, four branched interradial canals, eight unbranched atrial canals extend from the pouches into the ring canal. So this is the ring canal. Four branched atrial, uh, eight unbranched atrial canals, radial canals, or four branched interradial canals all lead into the ring canal. Now these ring canals form branches. Finally, if, uh, finally form a circular canal. Now the gullet or the stomach with all the gastric pouches and all the canals constitutes the enteric cavity. This is again lined with ciliated endodermal cells. Please mute yourselves. Now, so this whole thing forms the gastrovascular cavity as such. Now, Aurelia is, that is the jellyfish is unisexual in nature. Gonades are internal. This is the gonadal pouch also that is going to be present. And uh, then these uh, gonades are internal. They lie in the gastric pouches. See, this is the gastric pouch. The gonades will be inside and they can be seen from the outside. They are either red or purple or they can be horseshoe shaped uh, or uh, they can just, you know, and they are located just above the subgenital pit, which are small rounded apertures that are present near the mouth, which is rectangular in shape at the interradial position. Now, when it comes to histology, you have a lot of, uh, 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 like, you know, uh, the cell structure of the hydrozoids. Uh, so is similar to that of the uh, scyphozoans, that is Aurelia resembles the hydrozoans. So ectoderm covers the bell all around and uh, I'll have to show you this picture so you can just like you know have a look at it and uh, you can see that it looks like the hydra as such uh, with the umbrella shape. Ectoderm it covers the bell all around over here all the cells, that is the stinging cells, epithelial muscular cells, nerve cells, sensory cells, gland cells, all of them are present. And then the endoderm or the gastroderm is formed with ciliated cells. Muscular processes are absent, contains branched fibers derived from the ectoderm as such. Lo locomotion is by rhythmic contraction of the muscles that are present with the ex umbrella surface that is kept upwards. You have a gelatinous mesoglia which provides the buoyancy and then there are eight tentacular cysts that help in uh, balance. That is the sensor or they are the organs of equilibrium which is necessary during swimming. Nutrition again, it is a car carnivore. The jellyfishes are carnivorous in nature. Is there anything about uh, nutrition here? <laughs> I request you all to please uh, mute yourselves so you'll be able to understand. Yes, do you have any doubt? PC, misoglia. Misoglia. Yes, you were saying something? Misoglia, ma'am. Misoglia is the layer of cells that is present in between the outer ectoderm and the inner endoderm. It is the gelatinous substance that is filled. It has amoeboid cells in it. And uh, this provides the buoyancy. This provides different kinds of, uh, uh, like, you know, requirements for the uh, jellyfish as such. So when it comes to the nutrition of Aurelia, uh, you can get to see that Aurelia feeds on uh, other invertebrates such as crustaceans worms, eggs, larvae, and all the other suspended uh, organic material. And then mainly it's a suspension or a ciliary feeder. So what happens is when the animal, which is like this, moves downwards, if it comes in across, across some kind of food, it comes and starts taking it. That's all. It does not go and it does not hunt. Tentacles move the food laden 
uh, uh, mucus to the bell margin and this is collected by the oral arms that are produced uh, that are present and then passed on to the mouth then the nematocysts that are present in the gastric filaments uh, or the gastric pouches for that matter kill or paralyze the living food then digestive enzymes are produced and then there is extracellular digestion taking place with uh, and digestion of both proteins, fats, carbohydrates, chitin, all of it can be done because chitin, carbohydrates, proteins, fats are present. If it is a crustacean, we are talking about chitin also. And then the partially digested food again passes through different canals that are present into the food vacuoles of the endodermal cells, wherein inside the endodermal cells you have intracellular digestion taking place. This digested food is again collected, distributed by the mesoglia, which has amoeboid cells. So amoeboid cells in the mesoglia have a, uh, a purpose of distribution. They're like, you know, one of the functions is to distribute the digested food. Now, you have gastrodermal cells, uh, which are present in the gastric filaments. They help in the storage of reserve food in the form of fat droplets and glycogen. Now, circulation. When it comes to circulation, you have a well-developed gastrovascular system again. So, water circulates into the body of the Aurelia. And uh, this is used for the physiological activities that take place. So cilia which are present on the endoderm layer help in this particular uh, function as such. Water enters through the mouth, reaches the circular canal. And this is by done uh, after passing through the gastric pouches and the unbranched aradial canals. Then again, it returns to the gastric pouches from the circular canal. Again, that is done by the interradial and the perradial canals. Finally, it comes out into uh, from the gastric pouches to the outside by the excellent grooves on the oral arms. So all one circulation for whatever water that is present to take place, it takes around one uh, around 20 minutes to complete. No specialized organis, uh, organelles or organ, uh, organs are present for excretion or respiration. The whole body surface takes, uh, like, you know, uh, uh, there is gas exchange taking place as such. And uh, oxygen is uh, taken in, carbon dioxide is removed out. And this is how even excretion or the excretory matter uh, uh, is also released into the water through diffusion or gaseous, uh, like, you know, through exchange or through the body surface. When it comes to nervous system and the sensory organs, you get to see that it is a diffuse nerve net that is present with around eight rophelial ganglia. This is how a rophelial lipid is present and you have a rophelial ganglion that is present over here. This nerve net has a pulsation of a bell uh, controlled by the, see this is the bell margin. So you have a coronal and radial muscles of the ectoderm that are present. And then you have small diffuse nerve net and the nerve cells that are present, both sub and X umbrella. Sub means beneath, X means on the top. It controls local reactions such as feeding. And also uh, then again, pulsations are uh, 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 can be inhibited because of when two nerve nets join together through the tentaculocysts. So sensory organs are the uh, rophelia that are present. See, this is a rophelia effect. So this is a rophelia and such. And then you have ocelli, ocellus, or, and then you have olfactory pits. Olfactory is for uh, uh, um, smelling as such. But all of it we are talking about are basic in nature. I request you to, you know, please like, you know, kind of uh, spend some time because, you know, I want to finish this lesson. So another 10, 15 minutes uh, is what I'm like requesting you all to stay. Let's finish this lesson if possible. So when it comes to nervous system, sense organs, as I told you, presence of uh, tentacular cysts, ocelli, olfactory uh, pits is present. And then each tentacular cyst or the rophelium is hollow, club-shaped with a status. As you can see, this is the club shape with a statocyst connected to the circular canal. And at the end, you have a mass of cells derived from the gastrodermis which are known as otoliths or statolists. Uh, statolists. Immediately beneath the statocyst is a, is a pad of sensory uh, uh, epithelial cells, which are known as the uh, rophelial lapel, basically. And then there are two kinds of ocelli that are present. Um, 
one on the outer shape of this club shaped uh, uh, projection or the tentaculosis this is known as a pigment spot ocellus the other is called as a pigment cup ocellus it is light sensitive so reaction to light is what is being seen by the ocelli you have an olfactory pit that is mentioned again lined with sensory epithelium this is again associated with a tentacular cyst and the outer aboral olfactory pit lies in the ex umbrella region at the base of the hood and these uh, these are chemoreceptor organs which help in the recognition selection of food and when it comes to reproduction again sexes are separate no sexual dimorphism that is both male and female uh, uh, animals look alike ova spermatozoa whatever are present from uh, uh, formed up from the germinal epithelium of the male and the female gonads which are in the gastric pouches ripe gametes release into the stomach male gametes or the spermatozoa escape into the surrounding water through the mouth and then they are carried to the water current to the females female gametes or the ova are not released they remain in the gastric pouches itself and the male gametes enter into the gastrovascular cavity of the female fertilization takes place inside the gastric pouches now the fertilized eggs leave the parental female animal along with a water current then they settle in the grooves of the oral arms they settle in the grooves of the oral arms and then they help in the development uh, up to the formation of the larval form which is the planula larva so this is the reproductive stage egg is over here after fertilization and it gets uh, to the oral arms in fact then it becomes the uh, planula larva and then once the planula larva is formed it escapes out swims for some time gets attached to a seaweed or anything of that sort for that matter and uh, or to a stone or a seaweed and then at the anterior broad aboral end cilia are lost cilia is the free uh, like you know which helps in the swimming basically so cilia are lost so you have another trumpet shaped structure which is known as the hydrotubula or hydrotuba and this is the polypoid stage once this is done again you have a basal disc mouth tentacles and during metamorphosis the mouth becomes rectangular margins become elongated to form a short manubrium endoderm of the enteric cavity forms the four interradial or longitudinal ridges called as the gastric ridges or the mesenteries then they divide in uh, the cilentrol into four different pouches again ectoderm present between the mouth tentacles sinks down into the four ridges to form funnel like depressions called as the septal funnels or the infundibula so this is the scyphe stoma with uh, with a bud basically this is there in your uh, textbook if you can actually see something similar and then you have the strobilization which takes place that is transverse by fission now this dividing hydrotuba is called as the scyphe stoma or the strobila now when what happens during strobilization scyphe stoma Uh, undergoes the strobilization because of which body develops a series of ring like horizontal constrictions they look like saucers or disk shape and then each disk is called as an ephyra you can see this picture and then they are connected together by longitudinal muscular strands then all the older muscular strands contract to break then the ephyra larva which is there is pinched off see this is how it is pinched off from here transversely one by one into the uh, surrounding water they turn over and they swim away now the basal segment unsegmented part of the scyphe stoma then again starts growing into new tentacles this again lives as a hydrotuber for quite a number of time and then later it turns into a, an adult uh, a jellyfish now if i so that is given over here so as you can see if i ra lava whatever is there is so the gametes develop into zygote then to planula larva then to a hydrotuba then hydrotuba uh, you have this sexual uh, uh, what do you call it uh, it undergoes strobilization or strobila or scyphe stoma then you have the production of the ephyra and you have the sexual medusa or the adult 
aurelia that is produced so whatever is given in your box is this particular picture as you can see right now so the uh, description of ephyra has been given with stomach and a scyphe stomach, uh, like, you know, with gastric ridges is present. You have four interradial septal funnels. They become the subgenital pits. Then this is a free swimming actively uh, uh, active lava, which is or organism present in the seawater. Feeds on minute organisms, grows up in size. And then it uh, pushes uh, forward to form the solid endodermal lamellae, except in the gastrovascular canals. Um, a better picture of this has been given in your textbook, so you can just have a look at it. So for figure 4.9, that is, so part of the aradial canal and uh, adradial canal, sorry. Then, then you have the tentacular cyst, the second part, and then you have the gastric filaments, the manubrium, the mouth, the interradial canals, uh, the marginal lappets, and the arms, basically. So... When it comes to the life cycle of Aurelia, there is no particular or true alternation of generation that is seen. So what happens is the adult medusoid stage, which is a sexual uh, generation or the uh, sperm and ova producing stage, alternates with Skyphistoma representing the asexual uh, generation, which reproduces by the budding. So medusoid form alternates with Skyphistoma form and then uh, in Aurelia, the medusoid form is performed by the metamorphosis of the uh, uh, which is formed by or produced by strobilation. And it is a continuous process and there is no alternation of generation as such. So you have the life cycle again that is present over here, uh, the structure and how it is uh, basically taking place. How um, uh, the first A bit is uh, spermatozoa that is coming out. And then the B is the ovum. You, it is there in your textbook, basically. Figure 4.11010. Blastula, gastrulation, then the uh, planula section. Planula settling down to form hydrotuba. Hydrotuba to scyphistoma. Scyphistoma budding to ephyra. Ephyra to adult male and the adult female. And a different uh, cross-sectional view with the different kinds of... Uh, 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 parts of uh, the jellyfish. So we have something known as polymorphism that is being exhibited by the uh, jellyfishes. So when it comes to the polymorphism, you get to see that there are different, it is uh, a single organism itself having more than one kind of a physical form and each performs its own functions. So when it comes to that, such an organism is known as a polymorphic organism and the phenomenon is called as polymorphism. Poly, when it is in celenterates, you get to see that, especially in the class hydrozoa, you have a lot of polymor polymorphism taking place, especially hydra. So when it comes to hydra, you have a lot of uh, uh, polymorphism taking place and there is a lot of division of labor through the polymorphism taking place. So again, hydrozoa, sorry, not in hydra as such. So uh, in, in hydra is a mon monomorphic form, obelia, not many cells, are not only cells, but individuals get specialized as polyp and medusa to perform different uh, physiological functions. The colonial hydrozoans exhibit the highest degree of the polymorphism. I'm just trying to see the particular uh, slide to show polymorphism to you if possible. Right, let us just stick to this. So the colonial hydrozoa has two basic or main morphological forms, which is the types of individuals, which are known as the polyp form and the medusa form. So when it comes to that, um, the polyp is a nutritive zooid. It, it is a sessile tubular form, basically, with having mouth, tentacles, enteric cavity. And... The polyp and the medusa form occur in the number of the morph many in number of morphological variations. There is uh, they exhibit dimorphism and medusa uh, have the gonozoids to them. 
and some hydrozoan colonies are trimorphic in nature besides the nutritive polyp and reproductive medusa they also have modified polyp that is the gonozoids or the blastostyles they have no mouth or, or tentacles and produce medusae by budding and you have order siphonophora showing the highest degree of uh, uh, polymorphism they have three different kinds of polypoids and four different kinds of medusoids for that matter i'm trying to get a picture of it let us see if we can get a picture of siphonophores Right, if you can see this particular picture, you can see that this is the Physalia, the Portuguese man of war, in fact. So you have different kinds of uh, zooids, basically. So the arrangement and the composition of different zooids varies in different groups, basically. So the individual zooids in one colony are attached to a stem or a stalk. A trunk, which is known as a cenosarc or a cenozoom, single zooid or a cormidium. Uh, 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 in that itself, there are different modified uh, mo uh, modified polypoid forms, which is the gastrozooids, the dactylozooids, the gonozooids, etc. This is there in Physalia, as you can see. Then, when one cormidia breaks off from the parent colony, then they are known as eduxids. This increases the chances of cross fertilization also. So you have different kinds of organisms showing different kinds of uh, zooids basically. So when it comes to the polypoid forms, there are three different kinds of polyps: gastrozooids, dactylozooids, and gonozooids. Gastrozooids uh, they are like you know having a nutritive function for that matter, and uh, they help in the feeding nutritional support they have usually tubular or saccular form with large mouth cylinder on uh, they have a hollow tentacle that comes out basically and uh, only exception is velilla apparently that does not have tentacles so now tentacles again bear nematocysts and when the prey is in the vicinity this helps in capturing of the prey or paralyzing it the tentacle helps in the transfer of the food to the mouth so in summary you see that gastrozooids have nutritive functions. These are the dactylozooids. They are longer in nature. And they are also known as the palpons, feelers, or tasters. Help in defense. Also for obtaining food. They do not have a mouth. They have nematocysts and gonopalpons. So in Physalia, the dactylozooids may reach a length of 30 meters. One meter is three feet. So, if you see like that, if three feet make a meter, 30 meters means we are talking about 90 feet. So, the dactylozoids can be so long. And when it comes to gonozoids, again, they are also known as blastocytes. They are devoid of uh, uh, mouth, except in the case of uh, 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 Velella and Porpita. They have uh, uh, the sexual medusoids. And they form a, a branched stalk called as a gonodendron, which bears grape-like structures, which are known as the gonophores. And uh, they also have a gonopalpon for that matter. And then these two are uh, in colonies of hydractina. Along with this, there are also tentaculozoids. Example, Velella and Porpita have them. And then you have even skeletozoids, which have chitinous spiny projections. But these are all the polypoid forms that are present. When it comes to the medusoid forms, you have pneumonitophores, nectocalysis, bracts, gonophores, etc. So pneumatophores, this is the pneumatophore that is present. This is gas-filled bladder or vesicle present at one end of the colony, functions as a float so that, you know, all this whole colony is uh, floating on the water. 
different kinds of pneumatophores are also present as in the key, uh, see, uh, they all belong to the order Saxonophora. Bell has an external umbrella wall, which is known as the pneumatocodon, internal sub umbrella uh, wall, which is known as the pneumatosacus or the air sac. Now, both walls are highly muscular. Air sac also has a gas gland, secretes gas into this bell shape. So, floating purpose. So, as seen in the case of uh, Physalia, carbon monoxide is secreted. Carbon monoxide. Other variations are also there. And uh, then in the case of uh, certain animals, such as Rhizophysa porpita, air sac opens outside. Diphys, pneumatophore is absent. But the floating of the animal is because of secretion of droplets of oil by a structure called as a stoma, soma, somatocyst. Velella, the float basin, erect sail as well. When it comes to nectocalysis, you have nectophores, nectocalysis, and nectozoids. They're also the, the uh, swimming bells, basically, with four radial canals, circular canal, uh, uh, velum, but no mouth, no manubrium, no tentacles or cells, uh, sense organs. Musculature is well developed. They are also excellent swimmers for a locomotion for the, of the colony. You also have brats. Let me see if I can come back to our picture. So this is as seen in Hydra. So we are talking basically over here just about the forms as such. Uh, so let like you know let this particular slide be there. For sure, right. Right. So when it comes to the brats as such, you know they are also known as the hydrophilia or the uh, uh, philozoids. They are leaf-like, shield-like. And uh, uh, but they have a shield, or uh, it is also like a prism-like or a helmet-like body with thick gelatinous mass. Yes, no shares. Right. So body has a thick gelatinous mass as such. And then they are also, they have a protective uh, function. They shield the other zooids of the colony. So recent view is that all these bracts, whatever are present, they're actually nothing but modified tentacles. Now we have gonophores also. They are degenerate uh, uh, medusae with no mouth tentacles or sense organs. They have a velum, canals and a manubrium. Uh, they bear the gonads and uh, the common polymorphic siphonophores are this phy uh, halistema, physalia, velella, porpita, all these are the polymorphic forms. So when it comes to the origin and evolution of polymorphism, you get to see that uh, different theories have come up and according to certain scientists like Huxley, as Scholz and Mishinov, different zooids are uh, the different organs uh, of a single medusoid individual, and uh, which is uh, having a man uh, manubrium, tentacles, umbrella. They have multiplied or migrated from the primitive positions as such. So this is known as the poly organ theory. So different organs have come from a single medusoid uh, individual. Lukart is one scientist who actually told that the colonial uh, uh, form, uh, a polymorphic individual is actually from a colonial form and having diversified organs the, that is grouped together to perform different in, uh, functions. This is known as the polyperson theory. According to Hackel, Balfour, Sedgwick, the primitive zooid of the colony was actually a medusa. This was produced by other medusae by Buddy. And uh, uh, but then, you know, what is ex exactly, you know, a problem that the investigators uh, came to know is which of the two forms? Is this the polyp form or the medusa form which has originated first? So this is because instead of dividing the labor among the different cells in the body of an individual, entirely new individual is formed solely for the purpose of uh, reproduction. So what is happening is because of the alternations of generations, we do not. We do not Yes. Madam, madam, sorry for disturbing. Madam, time out, madam, please, class, tomorrow.
tomorrow na malli okay then i'll cut, uh, let me da- just start one sentence on that b r ambedkar open university ne maatladtunna yeah yes sir i understood sir okay. just one minute typo in just two minutes uh, two sentences more if, uh, class complete chest okay okay carry on madam yeah, thank you sir so when you get to see the big question is as such is the polyp form uh, first or the medusa form that has originated so we still do not have an answer for that because of the fact that polyp form gives rise to the vegetative functions the medusa form has given rise to the regeneration or the uh, purpose of reproduction so finally we have to see or remember that the medusite forms are mobile in nature they help in the dispersal of species and uh, especially of the dispersal of the species of the stationary polypoid forms so this phenomenon help or or helped originate the alternations of generations as such or which is known as the metagenesis so the next class i will deal with corals coral reefs as such yeah, again uh, just around two pages of it is there uh we'll continue it in the next class okay yeah okay ma'am okay ma'am okay ma'am thank you all right thank, thank you so much okay ma'am thank you